Okay, our second day here in Kathmandu. We're just taking a short taxi ride to a Hindu temple where they have a cremation site. Here we'll see uh, dead bodies that are cremated in the open here. It's a kind of uh, ceremony where they do that on the riverbank here. Let's go and have a look here. Maybe a bit too much for Western people to take in, but let's go and have a look. Today's also the second last day of the Dashain festival here. So it's a national holiday today. Maybe everything is closed. The streets are quiet. Okay, I'll try and tell you about this place here. This is where all Hindus are cremated. It's a public cremation that's uh, taking place here. Uh, all day, every day. Okay, so this is the holiest place where Hindus are brought to be uh, cremated. So nearly all of them in Kathmandu will be brought here. And some from the surrounding Nepal and people are also flying, flown from uh, all parts of the world to, to be cremated here. So it's a public cremation. You can actually see behind us what is uh, what is going on. So three hours after a person dies here, they'll be brought here and uh, cremated at the side of the river. This river actually uh, leads into the Ganges River in India. So this is the, the start of it here. And uh, some things that appear very, very strange for Western people. It's a quite a bit of a overwhelming place to be if you're not used to this kind of thing. But this is what they do here in Nepal to this day. So three hours after a person dies, they'll be brought here. And uh, if they wake up during the ceremony, so they'll be taken back to the hospital over there will be taken to. If they actually wake up after the, um, the body has started to be burnt, then they'll have to continue with the, with the cremation. So they set fire to the mouth first, and from there then they burn the body. But, uh, if they've set fire to the mouth and somebody wakes up, they have to continue. They believe that uh, demons have awoken the body. So uh, they have many superstitions here. Male members of the family that are next to the body and are carrying it around here, and the females stay away because when you've been here uh, and in contact with a dead person, then you are not clean anymore. And the women have to be clean because they have to go home to the house and look after the children. But the men, they are unclean after the burial ceremony and they have to stay here in the temple for 13 days after the death. So after the body has been cremated at the side of the river, the, um, the ashes they will be pushed into the, the river, the Ganges River here. And there's a few things that will be quite surprising to a lot of you watching this now because they also do human sacrifices here. That still goes on to this day. Once a year they will select somebody from the community that has to be sacrificed. The person they select, there's uh, elders that will select the person that has to be sacrificed and, uh, and this is true, this is not a joke, this is real. They, uh, they actually sacrifice a human person here. But it will be per somebody that's a criminal, a rapist or a murderer, somebody from the community that, uh, that uh, they wish to be removed. So they'll be sacrificed so, here. There are also priests here, and they're chosen as children to be the priests. So they, they live here and they have to learn the holy Vedas by heart and they have to recite them once a year. It's a huge book they have to recite by heart. So if there's any people that die here and they don't have any family to inherit the uh, the belongings of the person, this, all the belongings they go to the priests here. So they actually do quite well from just living here and uh, getting the belongings from people. So on the opposite side of the river there's the, the main temple to the god Shiva, one of the main three Hindu gods. And, uh, only Hindus are allowed to go in there. It's very, very, very expensive. I think the guy told us $25,000 to go in there and uh, pray to uh, to Shiva. There's a golden cow with 500 kilograms of gold. And, uh, the money, yes, we ask where does the money go that the people are paying? It goes to four priests that live here in the temple. And uh, the money is just for their own personal use. So these four priests, they are extremely wealthy. We also learn that all Hindu girls, um, when they become well, a teenager around that time, then they're locked in a dark room for either 15 or 30 days, depending on what the family believe is right. Um, and they can't see any male members of the family, only their mother and their grandmother can bring them some, some food into the room. And then they're kept there, and when they come out of this dark room after 15 or 30 days, then they are married to the god Shiva, so he will become their first husband. And sometimes it can happen that the girls die from fear of being in the in the dark room, and that's well, that's just the way it is. Then. And then they are buried within the house if they die in the house. Yeah. 
Now, there's many things here that seem completely strange to people in the West. But, uh, and yeah, that's what we've learned in this little, place today. A little bit shocked about the yeah. stories we heard here. Yeah, can't believe some of these things are actually true and going on, but that's what they're doing here and they've been doing for thousands of years. Well, this is our second attraction we're visiting today. This is a Buddhist temple for Buddha Stupa. You can see the difference again from the Hindu temple to a Buddhist. This has got the all seeing eyes there of the Buddha. Yeah, we've got ourselves a very good, uh, very good restaurant view, top view here over Kathmandu. Yeah, here we are to Buddha. Yeah. Nice Buddhist temple. Let's go and have a look at this place from the view here. What is it now? There are only three seats here and we're sitting four people. <laughs> and no, yeah, so difficult. Now we have to go back and pack our rucksacks because tomorrow we're going hiking. So, uh, oh, let's go. <laughs> In the Shiva temple this morning where they were doing the uh, public cremations. We uh, haven't seen anything like that before. It's not something we are used to seeing in the West, so quite a an experience really, um, but that's the way they do it here. They don't see it as a sad thing, it's a way of life. They believe in a reincarnation, so it's a, yeah, they see it more as of a, of a celebration than what we do. Um, but uh, yeah, we uh, learned a lot very quickly there. They also uh, practice uh, human cannibalism. There's a guy there who was actually eating the human flesh, which is some things with these kind of things we just don't <laughs> hear of at all in the west but uh, yeah quite an eye-opening day really um, but that's it yeah we uh, had another day here in uh, Kathmandu tomorrow we are up very early and taking a jeep to uh, the start of a, a trekking tour so we are on a two-day trek tomorrow in the mountains and should have some uh, good views in the next few days of Mount Everest so that's going to be uh, that's going to be exciting so uh, I'll go to bed now early and we'll be up uh, and on our way to the mountains okay see you tomorrow <laughs>